Hi, sis. I just came over to drop off the DVDs you wanted, and... Hey, wow. Where did you get all this stuff? I bought it. So what do you think of my new entertainment center? And the widescreen TV? Bought it? And my new DVD player. Here, let me show you my stereo. You can really rock the house with this one. But where did you get the dough to buy all this? You didn't borrow money from Mom and Dad again, did you? Of course not. I got it with this. This? Let me see that. Have you been using Dad's credit card again? No, silly. It's mine. It's a student credit card. A student credit card? How in the world did you get one of these? I got an application in the mail. Well, why did you get one in the first place? Listen, times are changing, and having a credit card helps you build a credit rating, control spending, and even buy things that you can't pay with cash, like the plane ticket I got recently. What plane ticket? Oh yeah, my roommate and I are going to Hawaii over the school break, and of course I need some new clothes for that, so... I don't want to hear it. How does having a student credit card control spending? It sounds like you've spent yourself into a hole. Anyway, student credit cards just lead to impulse spending, as I can see here. And the interest rates of student credit cards are usually sky high. And if you miss a payment, the rates will just jump. The credit card has a credit limit. Of $20,000? No, not quite that high. Anyway... I've heard enough. Did I tell you we now get digital cable with over 100 channels? Mm -hmm. Oh, and here's your birthday present, a new MP3 player. Yeah. No, don't tell me. Charged on the credit card. Listen, hey, I don't think having a student credit card is a bad idea, but this is ridiculous. And how in the world are you going to pay off your credit card bill? Uh, with my birthday money? It's coming up in a week. Hey, let's sit down and talk about how you're going to pay things back. And maybe we can come up with a budget that will help you get out of this mess. That's the least I can do. Honey, the basketball game's about to start. And could you bring some chips and a bowl of ice cream? And a slice of pizza from the fridge. Anything else? Nope, that's all for now. Hey, hon, you know, they're organizing a company basketball team. And I'm thinking about joining. What do you think? Hmph. Huh. Huh. What do you mean, huh? I was the star player in high school. Yeah, 25 years ago. Look, I just don't want you having a heart attack running up and down the court. So what are you suggesting? Should I just abandon the idea? I'm not that out of shape. Well, you ought to at least have a physical before you begin. I mean, it has been at least five years since you played at all. Well, okay, but... And you need to watch your diet and cut back on the fatty foods like ice cream. Hmm. And you should try eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. Yeah, you're probably right. And you should take up a little weight training to strengthen your muscles, or perhaps try cycling to build up your cardiovascular system. Oh, and you need to go to bed early instead of watching TV half the night. Hey, you're starting to sound like my personal fitness instructor. Nah, I just love you and I want you to be around for a long, long time. My name's Randall Davis and I'm originally from the state of Indiana in the United States. When I was 19 years old, I moved to Venezuela in South America and later returned to the United States where I attended Brigham Young University in the 1980s. I majored in Spanish education and TESOL, or teaching English as a second language. After graduating from college, my wife and I moved to Japan, where we lived for eight years. Now I work back in the States in Utah. However, my greatest interests are my family. Years ago, I wanted to make something of myself in my profession. You know, get ahead in life. However, I realized that the most important things in life lived within the walls of my own home, and today I try to put them first. My kids wouldn't remember me for the work I did outside of the home. They would only recall the moments we spent together. Therefore, I enjoy spending time with my family. I have four children, and we go hiking and camping together, usually in Utah. On our hikes, we often talk about life, and I tell stories or share personal experiences. When I do this, I can focus on the kids without the distractions of video games or the Internet. Telling stories sounds easy, but when you have to think of a new story on a hot 12-kilometer hike through the desert, you have to come up with ideas off the top of your head. Now, this doesn't mean we don't have problems. All families face challenges in their lives, and our family is no exception. However, 
we try to talk openly about our problems, and we try to solve our problems together. Building a strong family takes time, but it's worth the effort. Hello, twenty fourth precinct, Officer Jones speaking. Help! Yeah, uh, it was wild. I mean, really bizarre. Calm down, sir. Now, what do you want to report? Well, I'd like to report a UFO sighting. A what? What do you mean, what? An unidentified flying object. Wait, tell me exactly what you saw. Well, I was driving home from a party about three hours ago, so it was about two a.m. when I saw this bright light overhead. Okay, and then what happened? Oh man, well it was out of this world. I stopped to watch the light when it disappeared behind a hill about a kilometer ahead of me. All right, then what? Well, I got back in my car and I started driving toward where the UFO landed. Now, how do you know it was a UFO? Perhaps you only saw the lights of an airplane. No. Or the headlights of an approaching car. No. Things like that happen, you know. Well, if it was that, how do you explain the beast? What do you mean, the beast? Okay, I kept driving for about five minutes when all of a sudden this giant hairy creature jumped out in front of my car. Oh yeah? Then what? Well, then the beast picked up the front of my car and said, "Get out of the car! I'm taking you to my master." Something like that. Wow, a hairy alien who can speak English. Come on. I'm not making this up. If that's what you're suggesting, then when I didn't get out of my car, the beast opened the car door, carried me on his shoulders to this round-shaped flying saucer, and well, that's when I woke up alongside the road. The beast must have knocked me out and left me there. Well, that's the best story I've heard all night, sir. Now, have you been taking any medication, drugs, or alcohol in the last twenty-four hours? You mentioned you went to a party. What? Well, I did have a few beers, but I'm telling the truth. Okay, okay. We have a great therapist that deals with these kind of cases. I'm not crazy. Well, we'll look into your story. Thank you. Excuse me. Do you、yeah. have any keys or money in your pockets? No, no. I think I've taken everything out. Okay. Go ahead and walk through the body scanner. Will I feel anything? No, sir. Just walk through and keep your hands in the air. Okay. Uh huh. We need to do some additional screening. Sorry, sir. Please、What? come this way. Did I? Did you find something? Relax, sir. Okay. I'm going to open your carry-on bag.、Uh -huh. As I'm going through it, please do not try to touch it. But I mean, let's、uh, let's see here.、Um, first of all, sir, you can't take any liquids like this bottled water past this point. Uh, well, I really can't drink any other kind of water. Sierra Springs is the only bottled water I drink. Sorry, I... sorry, sir. Oh. And sir, what's this?、What? No, no, sir. You cannot bring a lighter on the plane. But I don't smoke. I well, mean, you still can't bring it on the plane. Yeah, but I have it just in case of emergencies. You know, as an emergency fire starter in case the plane crashes into a dark forest. Sir, you'll have to leave that here. Oh. What's this?、Uh, well, well, that's my pocket knife. A pocket knife? It's almost a foot long. Well, it's a special knife given to me by my grandfather. But I only use it to peel apples and fruit, you know, things like that. Sir, I'm sorry, but you can't take that on the plane. In fact,、uh, do you have any other prohibited items in your bag? Well, I, I don't. Mean, didn't you read the sign back there explaining all the items that were not allowed on board? Well, I started to read it, and then I got a little distracted. A but... little, sir. How many times have you flown on an airplane? Uh, it's been a while. I think the last time I traveled by plane was about. Ah,、uh, nineteen sixty. Sir, why don't you come with me? What? I think my supervisor would like to ask you a few questions. Oh no! Well, hello everyone, and welcome to today's show. And joining me today is my daughter Ashley, who has had to endure my cooking experiments over the years. Are we ready, Ashley? Ready to eat? Well, let's wait for a few minutes. We'll get to that. But as you know, my faithful listeners, I started cooking and baking almost 30 years ago when my grandmother taught me in her humble kitchen. In fact, 
She taught me almost everything I know, and I've never attended cooking classes. You should have. Wait, wait, wait. I know my daughter's going to mention to you, faithful listeners, that recently, as I was helping the kids prepare for our kitchen for a chicken meal, I forgot to take the chicken out of the oven, burn the bird to a crisp. And we ended up ordering pizza for dinner. We had to use a fire extinguisher. <laughs> But that's another story. So anyway, today I'd like to share with you our favorite, at least my favorite, chocolate chip cookie recipe. Now, before you switch the TV channel, I know what you're thinking: another fattening cookie recipe. But wait, what makes this recipe great is that it offers a wonderful, low-fat, low-calorie. Low cholesterol dessert for the entire family. We still like the fat, though. <laughs> well, I know we do, but let's say、um, we have all the ingredients, and so we can start by mixing all of the ingredients: the sugars, the flour, the egg whites, the low-fat butter, vanilla, baking soda, and a pinch of salt in a large mixing bowl. Then we add the mini chocolate chips. Now, my kids would like me to add the big ones, but. We start with the mini chocolate chips, and don't forget to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And finally, when the cookies are done, take them out of the oven, remove them from the cookie sheet, and let them cool before their fingers get into them. Did I forget anything? Yeah. If you have college-age kids, be sure to make a few extra batches they can take back to school for their roommates. And don't forget, the kids still at home. Oh well, yeah. We can't do that. We can't forget them. And unfortunately, by the time your kids get the cookies, you, the cook, will be left with a single cookie, your instant diet plan for you, and a dirty kitchen. So that's all for today. On next week's show, we will be showing you how to feed hungry teenagers on a budget without having to sell the family car. Until then. Hey Ashley, how many people are coming to the barbecue tomorrow? Well,、um, there's your family. That's four people. Okay. There are three from my work. Okay. And then Mike and Megan from across the street, and you and me, of course. Okay. So, what is everyone bringing? Um, let's see. Here's my list. Um, your brothers are bringing hamburgers, cheese, and buns. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad they're in charge of that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, my brother Jim, he eats like a horse. Uh huh. <laughs> and at the last barbecue, he put away at least what. Five hot dogs and five cheeseburgers. No, was, I think it was six, <laughs> six cheeseburgers, and it might have been more hot dogs. I don't know. He was still hungry. I know. I don't know how he did it. He does that all the time. He's and he's not even fat. You think <laughs> anyway? Oh yeah. Anyway, so my friends from work said that they could bring chips and salsa. Okay. And they're going to bring a salad. All right. And one of them is vegetarian, so she's going to bring her own veggie burger, so you don't have to worry about her. Okay, that's that'll work out. And Mike and Megan, you're gonna love this. They're gonna bring some of the corn from their garden. Oh, their corn is always so so good. Yeah, I know. It's wonderful. So,、um, yeah. And what about drink? Well, we're gonna have soda and juice and ice water as well. Okay. And what about dessert? I already have some ice cream and some homemade apple pie in the fridge. Oh, I can't wait. This is gonna be fun. Yeah. Dad. Dad. What's for breakfast? <sighs> Dad. <laughs> What? What's for breakfast? Oh, there's a banana on the kitchen counter. Enjoy. Dad, that banana's all bruised, and it looks like the cat took a bite out of it last night. Dad, wake up. <sighs> okay.、Uh, there's some cereal in the cupboard. Help yourself. But there's no milk. Well, just mix up some powdered milk. Uh, no way. That stuff is nasty and warm. Come on, Dad. Well, yeah, I guess I could make some pancakes. Uh, no. Last time you made pancakes, they were as hard as a rock. Even the dog wouldn't touch them. That bad? Yeah. All right. Wait. Why in the world are we having this conversation anyway? You're nineteen years old. Make your own breakfast. I'm going back to bed. Because you love me.、Mm. Plus, you said that you'd make something for me if I cleaned the dishes last night. <sighs> okay. How about some eggs and bacon? I can't go wrong there. Okay, but don't put any of that funny stuff in it. You know <laughs> those weird mushrooms,、oh. like you did last time. Okay, okay. So you want me to keep things simple, right? Exactly. But please hurry. My friend is picking me up in a few minutes. On a Saturday morning? Yeah, he's taking me fishing. Fishing? 
Since when did you start liking fishing? Since Dirk gave me this ring. What do you think? What? Wait, I'm not going to ask. Let me get breakfast on the table, then we'll have a long chat. Oh, he's here! I'll take $20 out of your wallet. I can buy breakfast on the way. Bye. Oh, no. Um, excuse me, is this seat taken? It is now. Take a seat. Uh, thanks. Um, I've been waiting for over two hours for the bus to come. Oh, yeah. The bus broke down about 50 miles back. Actually, the bus driver lost control of the bus when he spilled hot chocolate on himself. And then he tried to regain control of the bus and hit a rock and blew a tire. Uh, are you sure this bus is safe? I ain't sure if it's safe, but you can't beat the price. <laughs> um, well, um, where are you from? To tell you the truth, I really don't know. What? Uh, well, what do you mean? Well, you see, I was adopted when I was a baby, and I was told that I was born in New York City, but I can't be sure of that. Then my new parents raised me in a small town in Texas. I'm sure you have never heard of it. Huh? Oh, where? Well, well my parents, Fred and Norma, had a farm, and I grew up milking cows and herding sheep, and actually, I'm on my way to visit them now. You're going back to Texas? Oh, no. They sold that farm years ago when they discovered oil on the property. They live on a ranch right outside of Las Vegas now. Beautiful place with a pool. Las Vegas? Las with... Vegas? Yeah. I thought this bus was heading to Chicago in the oh. opposite direction. Oh, no, you're on the wrong bus. I, I've got to get off. Oh, no, relax. Spend a weekend with me and my parents on the ranch. I can teach you how to milk a cow or something like that. I have to get off. Oh, well, once this bus left the last station, it ain't going to stop until the next station three hours from now. And, and and the bus driver got really upset when the last passenger made the same mistake. So sit and relax. Let me tell you about the farm. I have plenty of stories. No, no. no. Yeah, well, once upon a time. Uh. Hi, how can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to rent a mid-sized car for three days. Okay, let me check to see if we have one available. Hmm. Okay. It doesn't look like we do. We have a couple of economy, compact, and full-size cars available for a nice minivan. Well, what is the main difference between those cars? The main difference is size. Okay. The economy car is the smallest, right. and it seats fewer passengers and can hold less luggage. Okay. How many people are with you? Just me and my son. Well, the economy car would work. We have one right out front. Where? That one? It looks more like a shoebox to me. I'm really tall, and trying to squeeze into that thing? I don't think so. Well, if you need more room of comfort, I recommend the full-size car. It also okay. has a nice stereo system, CD player, All right. safety rear door locks, and cruise control, and power locks and windows. Well, I'm not so concerned about how it's equipped. I just want to make sure it's comfortable to drive. And what's the daily rate for that anyway? Well, let's see here. Oh, yeah, it comes to fifty-seven ninety-five a day. Wow, that's a little expensive. But what is the cost for mileage? Hey, all our cars have unlimited miles, but of course that doesn't include gas. Yeah, right. I bet that car probably eats up gas, and now that we're in the middle of the vacation season, gas stations are gouging consumers with astronomical prices. Well, as they say, it comes down to the law of supply and demand. Well, anyway, can you install a car seat in one of those cars? I have a three-year-old son with me. Sure, that'll only be one dollar extra per day. I'll go with the full-size car. Wait, uh, what does it look like? Uh, it's right out there in the parking lot. Which one? The one over there next to the sidewalk. Do you mean that old lemon with the missing hubcap? Oh. Sir, excuse me. We take pride in our vehicles. It's just that it's one of the last cars on our lot, but it runs like a dream. Uh, Don't I... let the exterior fool you. Hey, I'll even give you an extra $15 off the daily rate to show you we are serious about pleasing our customers. Will there be any other drivers? No, I'm the only driver. Okay. Would you like to purchase our daily car protection plan? What's that exactly? Well, the car protection plan is a complete insurance package covering damage to the vehicle, okay. injury or loss of life to you or your passengers, oh. and even includes incidental road damage caused by, let's say, a huge boulder rolling down the mountain and crushing your car. Oh, uh, well. However, it won't cover loss of property due to theft. 
too much crime in the area anyway. What? 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 Did, well, what yeah. about this crime? What? Don't worry about what? it. Right. And the car protection plan is only seventeen ninety five per but, day. But you were saying? And the nicest thing about this covers is that you can rent the car without worry and hassle making a complicated claim in case you have a problem. But wouldn't my own car insurance cover those problems? It, <laughs> it might. Each insurance policy is different. With our car protection plan, however, you deal directly with us in case there's a problem. Well, and we handle everything quickly. And you don't have to contact your own insurance company. Okay, let me confirm this. A full-size car with a car seat for three days yeah, okay. plus the car protection package. Is that right? That's right. Okay, I'll have our mechanic, Louie, check the car over and pull it up to the door. Push it up to the door? I hope this car really runs. Well, in case it does break down on some out-of-the-way deserted road, what? just call the toll-free number for assistance. They'll come to assist you within two business days. Enjoy two, your trip. Two business days? <laughs> Hey, you! This is your carpet speaking. Hello! Hey! I take a real beating from you and your family every day. The kids track mud all over me. The dog leaves a bunch of fur balls everywhere. You spilt coffee the other day while entertaining guests. And your husband left a trail of potato chip crumbs from the sofa to the kitchen last night while watching the football game. Don't you think it's about time to give me a good cleaning? Now pick up that phone and call Master Cleaners now. I see them on the TV all the time. They'll clean any three rooms for $29.95 and any connecting hall is free. Plus, they'll throw in a free bottle of their amazing stain remover. And if you call now, you'll receive a 15% discount off their already low prices. So come on, give them a call at 637-5001 and make life for me a little easier. Uh, nice doggy, nice doggy. Ryan, I just want you to know that I'm going to school to become an auto mechanic. Oh, uh, what? Does Nad know about this? Who cares? It's my life. I really enjoy working on cars. <sighs> I get it. You want to study auto mechanics because of your new boyfriend. What's his name? Jimmy J or something? Listen, auto mechanics is a man's job. No, you got it all wrong. What? First of all, his name is James. And oh. second, he doesn't work at an auto shop anymore. He had a job there for five years, and he really liked his job because he really learned how to identify and fix problems. You, on the other hand, can't even change the toilet paper roll in the bathroom. Hey, that's not fair. And James is now back in college. He's majoring in nursing. Nursing? Nur that's a woman's job. I cannot believe I'm hearing this. What? A man can be a nurse, and they can do the job just as well as anybody else. Yeah. Nurses, whether they're men... Or women can care for the sick, the elderly, and things like that. Ah. And are you saying that women can't be farmers, carpenters, or truck drivers? Well, most men do those jobs. So, and anyway, women could do them if they want. I just think that women are better suited to be secretaries, waitresses, piano teachers, you know. Man, you're stuck in the 18th century. No one will marry you. No, well, just forget this. But... Well, not to change the subject, but I'm having a problem with my car, and I was wondering if Jimmy, I, I mean James, could take a look at it. Forget it. Start pushing. Ah. I wonder if this is going to be an interesting class. Yeah, me too. So, what's your major? Well, I've been batting around the idea of going into business, but I haven't decided yet, and my dad keeps telling me I have to choose a major, but I'm undeclared at the moment. Ah, that's what happened to me my freshman year. Oh, so what year are you in school? I'm a senior, and I only have to take ten more credits to graduate. Well, that must feel great to be almost finished with school. You can say that again. But once I graduate, I have to start repaying a student loan. Ooh. So I'm not looking forward to that. But didn't your parents help you out with your college tuition? No. My dad said he wasn't made of money, so he thought I should earn my own education. So I worked like crazy in the summer and part-time during the school year to cover my costs. Well, that's parents for you. And I received some financial aid and a scholarship one year, which really saved me. Oh, that's nice. But this past year, school has been more demanding, so I haven't been able to work as much. Well, you know, at least you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's true. Well, have you lined up a job yet? Not yet, but I'm trying to line up a few interviews at the job fair next month. Well, at least you have some ideas on your future. I mean, I'm taking a business class right now, and the teacher always lectures us by saying that life is difficult and we should prepare for our futures by setting realistic goals. 
And the only place that success comes before... Work w- is in the dictionary. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard all that before. Let me guess, is your teacher Paul Jones? Yeah. How do you know him? I mean, did you have him too? I mean, the guy is, you know, he's just real. He's, he's my dad. Yep. Your dad? I, I mean, I, I didn't mean anything by what I said. I wasn't bad-mouthing him or anything. I mean, he's a good teacher and all. It's just that... Hey, he's a dad. That's what dads do. Well, Lecture. He has about a thousand sermons on life, and he always shares them in his classes. Yeah. Well, um, nice talking to you. I I have to go. Same here. Bye. I'll tell Mr. Jones you said hello, and maybe we could study together at my house? No, 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 no. <laughs> Hi, uh, haven't we met before? You look so familiar. Yeah, we met on campus last week, yeah, and you yeah. asked me the same question. Oh, oh, really? I'm sorry, but I'm really terrible with names. But, 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 let me guess, it's Sherry, right? No, but you got the first letter right. I know, I know. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, wait, uh, Sandy, Susan. Nope. So I was that memorable? It, wait, wait. It's Sharon. You got it. And only on the fourth try. So, well, Sher- I mean, Sharon, how are you? Not bad. And what was your name? It's Ben, but everyone calls me BJ. And uh, what do you do, uh, Sh- uh, Sharon? I'm a graduate student, majoring in TESOL. A TESA? What's that? It stands for Teaching English as a Second Language. I want to teach English to non-native speakers overseas. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty good at that English grammar, you know, verbs and adjectives. And, uh, hey, that sounds really exciting. And do you need some type of specific degree or experience to do that? I mean, could I do something like that? Well, most employers overseas are looking for someone who has at least a bachelor's degree and one or two years of experience. Oh. And what do you do? Are you a student on campus? Yeah, but uh, I guess I'm mulling over the idea of going into accounting or international business, but I guess I'm leaning now towards a degree in marketing. Oh, uh, well, I have to run. I have a class in ten minutes. Oh, okay. And, uh, by the way, there's this uh, dance on campus at the Student Center tonight, and I was wondering if you'd... Uh, you know, like uh, to come along. Oh, really? Well, perhaps. Okay, well, bye. Hello, and thank you for calling Computer Technical Support. Ah, uh, yes, I have a problem. Your call is important to us, and we will oh. answer your call in the order that it was received. You are number... 47. In the queue. Your approximate waiting time is... 47. Minutes. Jason speaking. How can I help you? Oh, I'm saved. I thought I was going to have to wait all day. Okay, what's the problem? Yeah, well, I bought one of your laptop computers about three weeks ago, but it just isn't running right. Okay, well, sorry to say, but your computer is no longer under warranty. What? It ran out yesterday. What? A three-week warranty? Yeah, great, isn't it? Oh. Okay, okay, what seems to be the problem? Well, first of all, the thing always freezes and has crashed a zillion times. Always. Uh, sir? And I think the computer's infected with spyware and the big banana Trojan virus. That's That's my biggest... That's normal. That's my biggest concern. Oh, oh, uh, sir? And plus, there was a ton of pre-installed third-party programs that just clutter the computer. And I'm at my wit's end trying to get this thing to work. Sir, I have to put you on hold. What? It's going to take us a minute or so to diagnose the problem. Huh? I'm going to transfer you to our one technician. One? One? But... Thank you for waiting. Your call is important to us. You are number 84. In the queue. Your approximate waiting time is 2 hours, 17 minutes, or whenever we get around to answering your call. Does this experience sound familiar? Then do what I did. If your computer is holding you hostage and you can't get the service you deserve, Then call Turbo Command, creators of the safest and most reliable computers and operating system on the planet. Listen, while the competition is spending all of their time trying to imitate our computer's performance and features, our company is innovating the computer industry. So why buy a computer that hiccups every time you turn it on, when you can be the owner of the sleekest and friendliest machine ever? Call us today or visit our website for more information and let us introduce you to the ultimate computer experience. So Susan, do you have anything planned for this Saturday? Uh, I'm kind of busy. Why do you ask? 
Oh, I was wondering if you'd like to get together and do something like catch a movie or take a walk down by the lake. I'd love to, but I'm really going to be busy all day on Saturday. What do you have going on that day? First, my mom asked me to help clean the house in the morning, and then I have a dentist appointment at twelve thirty. I can't miss that because I've canceled twice before. Well, what about after that? Well, I'm going to be running around all day. After the dentist appointment, I need to meet Julie at two o'clock to help her with her science project that's due on Monday morning at school. Okay, but are you free after that? Hardly. Then I have to pick up my brother from soccer practice at four thirty, and my mom asked me to cook dinner for the family at five thirty. I feel like a slave sometimes. <laughs> Then I have to clean the dishes and finish reading my history assignment. Who knows how long that'll take? Wow, sounds like you're going to have a full day. Hey, listen, why don't I come over later in the evening and we can make some popcorn and watch a movie? Oh, that'd be great, but our TV's broken. Ugh. Well, let's just play a game or something. Sounds good. But give me a call before you come. My mom might try to come up with something else for me to do. <laughs> Time to eat. Coming. Oh, I'm starving. Good, good. Oh, yuck! What's that? Ah, now don't complain. But what is it? And where's mom? Now, mom put me in charge of dinner because she's not feeling well tonight. But what is it? And that smell. <laughs> It's pizza. I just followed an old family recipe here, and let me see that. Oh, Dad! What? You're missing the page. <laughs> oh well, well, I couldn't find the second page of the recipe, but don't worry, I have plenty of experience around the house, plenty of experience cooking. That's not what Mom said. Well, wait, wait. Here, let me try a piece first. Here, let me let me cool this off. Okay, okay. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, this is great stuff. Yeah, right. Why are you making that face? Well, well, it's just just a little rich for me. That's all. Let me try it, Dad. Uh, Dad, you put a little too much salt in it, and besides, it's burned. Well, And what's that? <laughs> well, well, that's just part of my own adaptation of the recipe. I added some pumpkin. Oh, not another one of your surprises! <laughs> pumpkin doesn't go on pizza. Well, okay. Well, so what? Uh, what do we do now? Well, how about some cold cereal? You can't mess up on that, Dad. Guess what, Mom? I got it. Great! That's super. What's going on? So, what did you get me? Nothing. I got my driver's license. Okay, bye. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? Mom said I could take the car to school this morning, and hold on here. I prepared a few rules regarding the use of motor vehicles in this house. Like what? Let me get my notes here. Dad, that looks like a book. Mom, Dad's being mean to me. Okay, let me get my reading glasses here. Okay, here we are. Rule number one: No driving with friends for the first six months. What? Teenagers often lack the judgment to drive responsibly, especially when several teenagers are involved. I mean, they speed, they joyride, they cruise around town way past midnight. But that's not me. Do I really need this lecture? This is such a drag. Furthermore, who really needs a car when a pair of shoes will work? I mean, life was different when I was your age. In fact, I used to walk to yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, I know. Both ways uphill and ten feet of snow. I've heard this story many times. Yeah. Oh, where were we? Oh yes, rule number two: You always must wear your seatbelt and obey the rules of the road. Duh! I wasn't born yesterday. Okay. Rule number three. You can't drive long distances at night because you might get drowsy and drive off the road. But driving to the movie theater is fine. But the movie theater is right across the street from our house. Exactly. So you could just park in the driveway and walk there. Mom, Dad's being unreasonable. And rule number four: You should never use a cell phone while driving. That could cause an accident. But you do. That's different. How is it different? You even need my help to turn your cell phone on. And rule number five. Remember that I love you, and I'm just a protective father who wants his daughter to always be safe. Does that mean I can take the car now? Well, I don't know. Please, Dad, please, you're the best dad in the whole wide world. That's not what you said earlier. Hey, having the car keys in my hands changes my whole perspective on life. Well, 
Okay, I guess. If I'm considered the best dad in the world for five minutes, then I'll accept that. Yeah. Okay, but drive carefully and don't forget to fill up the car with gas before you come home. Bye, I love you guys. <laughs> okay. Hun, do you think I did the right thing? Yeah, she has to grow up sometime. Hey, I hear you and Stephanie are really getting serious. Yeah, and I think she'll be impressed with my new exercise program. What? What are you talking about? What exercise program? What did you tell her? Well, you know, I enjoy staying in shape. Right. First, I generally get up every morning at 5.30 a.m. Oh, yeah. Since when? You don't roll out of bed until at least 7.30 p.m. <laughs> no, no. You know, Mondays and oh, Wednesdays. Oh, that's not another tall tale. I almost always go jogging for about half hour, you know, to improve my endurance. Hey, jogging in the refrigerator for a glass of milk doesn't count. And of course, before I leave, I usually make sure to do some stretches so I don't uh, pull a muscle on my run. Right, one jumping jack. <laughs> and then I told her that I usually lift weights Tuesdays and Thursdays for about an hour after work. Huh. This helps me build muscle strength. Mm, one pound barbell. <laughs> oh, no. And finally, I often go jogging on Saturdays with my dog. What dog? Um, well, and I like hiking because it helps me burn off stress and reduce anxiety that builds up during the week. Oh, yeah, those lies. No, well, and as for Fridays, I sometimes just relax at home by watching a movie or inviting you over to visit. If I buy the pizza. But, and, I, and on Sundays, I take the day off from exercising, but I usually take my dog for a walk. Forget it. She'll never buy the story. English Language Center, how may I help you? Yes, I'm calling to find out more information about your program. For example, what kind of courses do you offer? Well, first of all, the purpose of our program is to provide language learning opportunities to this area's community. Mm -hmm. Whether a student's goal is to master basic functional language skills, let's say for his or her job, or to study intensively to enter a U.S. college or university. Okay. I'm calling for a friend who's interested in attending a U.S. university. And that's the kind of uh, instruction that we provide, from basic communication courses to content-based classes such as computer literacy, intercultural communication, and business English. Great. What are your application deadlines for the next semester? Well, we ask applicants to apply no later than two months before the semester begins. Mm -hmm. This gives us time to process the application and issue the student's I-20. An I-20? Oh, an I-20 is a form that indicates that we are giving permission for the student to study in our program. Okay. And then the student takes this form to the U.S. Embassy in his or her country to apply for the F-1 student visa. All right. What is the tuition for a full-time student? It's $2,030. And how does one apply? Well, we can send you an application and you can mail that to us, or you can fill out our application that's online at our website. And are there other materials I would need to send in in addition to the application form? Uh, yes, you would need to send in a $35 non-refundable application fee, mm -hmm. a sponsorship form indicating who will be responsible financially for the student while studying in our program, and a bank statement showing that you or your sponsor has sufficient funds to cover tuition expenses and living costs for the entire year of study. And how can I send these materials to you? You can either send the application packet by regular mail or you can fax it. And the application fee? We accept money orders, traveler's checks, or credit cards. All right, I think that's about it. Okay, great. Oh, and what is your name? Okay, my name is Tony Nelson. You can just call and ask for me. Great, thank you for your help. No problem, and please don't hesitate to call again if you have any other questions. Okay, goodbye. Hello? Hi. I'm calling about the ad for the apartment found in today's newspaper. Okay. I'm kind of desperate, and I need something right away. Okay. What would you like to know? First of all, how big is it? It's a two-bedroom apartment with a living room, dining room, and kitchen, and one bathroom. There is also a place for a washer and dryer. Okay. And how old is the apartment complex? Well, let's just say it has a lot of history. To be honest, my great-grandfather built it during the 1920s. But it's a very sturdy and sound structure. Oh. And so is the apartment furnished at all? Oh, yeah. The apartment is partially furnished with a refrigerator, stove, and my grandmother's old dishwasher. Your grandmother's old dishwasher? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. What's the rent? It's $950 a month. Whoa, that is a little steep for me. But you could always split the cost with a roommate. Perhaps. Does that include utilities? Well, the rent includes gas and electricity, but not the phone bill. And the water pump is right out the back door. Water pump? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. 
Well, can I rent month to month, or do I have to sign a lease for a longer period of time? We require a six-month commitment for the apartment, and if you cancel the agreement any time during that period, hey, you lose your deposit. Oh, and how much is the deposit? It's four hundred dollars, and of course, this money is used to repair damage or general wear and tear on our apartment, like the leaks in the old roof from last year's snowstorm. Man, that was ugly! Plaster falling down from the ceiling, and I didn't even know there was a rat's nest up there. But we got that taken care of. A what? Oh. Do I get my deposit back after I move out? That's assuming I even move in. Generally speaking, we return the deposit minus a small fee for, you know, cleaning the apartment for the next tenant. But if you trash the place, then don't expect to get anything back. Okay. Oh, um, how close is the apartment to the university campus? It's about eight blocks from campus, but you can catch a number of buses right out in front. Oh, so then if there's a busy road out front. Is it noisy? Well, there are always trade-offs. It's a little noisy with the road outside and the airport behind you, but the place is really convenient because there's a supermarket and shopping center right across the street. Just keep the windows closed and a pair of earplugs handy, and you'll be fine. Okay. And one last question: Are there parking spaces for tenants? Yeah, the apartment has two covered parking spaces, which are really convenient during certain times of the year. Uh, I don't know. Is it possible for me to drop by and visit the apartment tomorrow morning? Sure, but just remember we rent the apartment on a first come first serve basis, so there's no guarantee it'll still be available then. Okay, thanks. Um, and where exactly is the apartment located? It's one block west of the wastewater treatment plant. Oh, are pets allowed? <laughs> well. You can keep small pets like a hamster in a small cage, but we don't allow larger animals like dogs, cats, or snakes, things like that. Um, I have a you rat. You don't you don't have anything like that, do you? Well, I have a rat that I keep in a cage. Will that be okay? Well, as long as it doesn't escape, I guess that's okay. And what's your name? It's Norman. Norman Bates. All right, Mr. Bates. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Hey, can you give me a hand with the groceries? And I told you I could do the shopping. Wow, do we really need all this stuff? Let me see that receipt. Hey, I only bought the essentials. Okay, let's see. Dog food, twenty-four dollars and seventy cents. We don't even have a dog. Well, it was going to be a surprise, but look in the back of the truck. What? <laughs> Speechless. I knew you'd love him. That thing? That dog's as big as a horse. Probably eats like one too. Ah, but he's sure friendly, and someone was giving him away at the supermarket, and I, I, I couldn't let that poor thing pass another day without a loving home. Whatever. Where was I? Eighteen dollars and nineteen cents for twenty-four cans of tomato juice. You don't even like that stuff. <sighs> Not yet. I've decided to change my eating habits. Right. You'll see. You'll see. Okay. Let's see, three eighty-four for a box of chocolate cookies、mm-hmm. and twelve fifty-six for a case of soft drinks. Yeah, changing your eating habits, huh? Do you really think that cookies are some type of diet food? Hey, I'll just eat a cookie or two every other hour. In fact, they're a great source of carbohydrates for energy. And you see, the tomato juice and cookies kind of, you know, cancel each other out. Oh, brother! <laughs> Can't believe what I'm hearing. Let's see, where was I? Carton of eggs, two fifty for a gallon of milk, three cans of tuna. Okay. Yeah. And finally, two steaks for eight fourteen. Now, something worth enjoying. I'll get the grill started. Well, well, the steaks are for Herbert. Herbert. Who's Herbert? Uh, he's the dog. You, no. <laughs> you see, the previous owner said that he's kind of he's somewhat picky about what he、no. eats, and the steaks might help him adjust、Absolutely、to his life. Absolutely not. No, no, no. And the steaks might help him adjust to his new home. Hey, oh, oh, what are you doing? Oh no! Why did you throw the steaks out on the ground outside? Well, now you and Herbert can get to know each other better. I'm going out to eat by myself. Ah.、Oh. Hey Brandon, what are you doing? Oh, you'll like this. It's a new website that helps you improve your writing skills for free. Really? Yeah, and that'd I, be really helpful. Yeah, and I'm signing up right now. Wow, let me see that. Yeah, it's easy. You just enter your name, 
your birthday, your address, your bank information, what? your credit card wait, number. Wait, 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 wait. What? I thought you said it was free. It is free. Then why do they need your bank and your credit card information? Well, you know, it's just, you know, just just to check your identity or something like that. But it, but it's all free. <sighs> what? It doesn't sound very free to me. No, you don't understand. No, this sounds pretty fishy to me. How do you know that this is a trusted website? Look, that doesn't look like a secure URL. Well, you don't understand. Look, it says right here on their page, right here. Our goal is help you learn. Trusting us, we knows how to help you in fifteen <laughs> days or or below. What? <laughs> what? That's terrible English. <laughs> Who wrote this? What country are they in? You need to help them with their English. I mean, this is a sure sign that they're trying to probably steal your personal information no. and your identity. No, no, no. And look, here is a picture of some of their staff, and they look honest. Hey. hey. You are so gullible. Hey, hey, what are you doing? I'm shutting down your computer. I can't watch my own brother fall for a scam like this. Ah, oh, you just don't understand. Hey, Phil, have you ever been to a Japanese public bath? I hear it's quite an experience. Yes, and what an experience. What do you mean? Well, it's nothing like visiting a swimming pool in the States. Well, what do you do when you go to a public bath? First, you take off your shoes before you enter. Okay. Then you pay an entrance fee to the man or woman at the front counter. Mm -hmm. Next, you get undressed in the dressing room, and I was very surprised and a little embarrassed to see that the woman who took my money was sitting on a platform where she had a clear view of the men's side of the dressing room. Really? This allows the workers to keep an eye on the patrons' belongings while they're in the bath. Wow. And do you wear a bathing suit or something? Oh, no. You don't wear anything. Then you go into the main bathing area and wash your body while sitting on a small stool about 40 centimeters high. On a stool? Yeah. It was really hard getting used to bathing in that position. Sometimes, even, people wash each other's backs. Oh, really? So what do you do after that? Well, after you've rinsed off all the soap, they usually have two or three large baths where you can soak for a while. Do you actually share the bath with other people? Yeah. Traditionally, the bath played an important role in the community. It gave neighbors an opportunity to socialize while bathing. Huh. Interesting. When you're all done bathing, people relax in the dressing room by watching TV, drinking tea or juice, or talking to friends. It's quite an experience. Hi. How can we help you today? Yeah, I'd like to get my hair trimmed a little. Uh, nothing fancy, just a basic trim. Well, can we interest you in today's special? Uh, nah, nah. Well, we'll shampoo, cut, style your hair for one unbelievable low price of nine ninety nine. Plus, we'll give you a clean shave and a back massage to help you relax. Well, I, I don't know. I don't have much time in. Best service in town. Well, okay, I'll have the complete service today. But as I said before, I just want to get my hair trimmed. A little off the top and the sides. That's all. I mean, that's all. No problem. Relax. You're in good hands. Okay, here we go. Now, how does this thing work? Huh? Wait. You know what you're doing, right? Relax, sir. Relax. I've been doing this for ten... <laughs> ten what? Sit back and relax. So what do you do for a living? I'm a lawyer, specializing in workplace accidents, and I'm in town for a very important job interview, and... Oops. What do you mean, oops? Hey, can I see a mirror? Nothing to worry about, sir. Relax. I'm just making some adjustments to the hair trimmer. There we are. Okay. Ow! <laughs> that hurt. That really hurt. What are you doing, anyway? Nothing to worry about, sir. Relax. That's what you just said a minute ago, and look at all my hair on the floor. And how much are you really cutting off? And where's a mirror? Oh, and time for the shampoo. Just lean back and we'll wash your hair away. You mean what's left of it? Relax. Your favorite word. Relax. Hey, hey, uh, hey, and you got shampoo in my eyes. I, I can't see. Where's the towel? Relax, sir. Relax. I'm almost finished. Yeah, just wait till I get finished with you. Okay, okay. Now let's dry your hair. Uh, put a little styling gel in it, and now style it with a blow dryer and brush. Voila! Hey, hey, 
what happened to my hair? You butchered it. And what's left of my hair turned purple. What kind of prank are you trying to pull here anyway? And are you even a licensed beautician? Well, sir, we offer money back guarantee of all our work. So if you're not completely satisfied. Satisfied? I'm anything but satisfied. I want to talk to the manager now. I'm sorry, but he's on vacation and he left me in charge. So if you. How in the world am I supposed to go to my job interview looking like this? Forget it. Forget it. Is there any place in this town that can give a decent haircut and fix this damage? Well, my brother works next door, and he offers a complete package for. I, I know, I know, nine ninety nine. I had it. Forget I even asked. Amy's, how you doing? Oh, hi, Stuart. School is so crazy these days, and when I'm not at school, I'm at work. Hey, listen. I'm getting together with Sarah and Paul tonight, and a few of our other friends are going to join us. Oh, and we're well, we're going out to eat and then catch a movie. Why don't you come with us? Hey, I'd love to, but I have to cram for a test tomorrow. Ah,、oh, come on. We're planning on having dinner around six thirty and then seeing a movie at seven thirty. We should be home by ten thirty, eleven thirty at the latest. I mean, you're always saying that you don't have any friends and that your love life, well, that you don't have one. <sighs> Come on! I I don't think I'd better. I haven't been feeling well lately. Yeah, because you study too much. Well, we'll have a blast. Come on, relax. Well, and it's Sarah's birthday too, and we're throwing her a small birthday party after the movie. Come on, best friends always stick together. Oh, okay. Great. I'll pick you up at six. Okay. See you then. But I have to be back by ten thirty. Ah, ten thirty midnight. It's all the same. See you at six.